Are you dreaming of visiting Switzerland? Planning a trip to Switzerland is very exciting, but it can also be overwhelming. How do you choose which of the many scenic cities, towns and villages to visit? Which mountaintop excursions should you take? And what's the best way to get around Switzerland? And of course, how much of the country can you realistically see within your time frame? If you've asked yourself any of these questions, this is the podcast for you. This is the Holidays to Switzerland travel podcast, and in each episode, your host Carolyn Schonefinger chats with Swiss travel experts to answer your most commonly asked questions, provide practical tips, and take you on a virtual visit to the most popular destinations, and of course, some hidden gems to help you plan your dream trip to Switzerland. And you'll hear plenty of conversations about Swiss cheese and chocolate too. Are you ready to plan your trip to Switzerland? Well, let's get started. Rootsie, are you someone who likes to venture a little off the regular tourist trail when you travel? Do you love to discover hidden gems that are far removed from mass tourism? That's something I love to do. And fortunately, Switzerland has plenty of relatively unknown but magical places to be explored. In fact, Switzerland Tourism has just released a list of 50 exceptional villages that they have classified as magical places in Switzerland. These villages can be found across all cantons of Switzerland and they represent the cultural and architectural diversity of the country. The magical places all belong to the federal inventory of sites of national importance and can be visited as part of your very own road trip or grand tour of Switzerland, but they can be reached by public transport too. Today, I'm joined by Livio Gertz, Director of Switzerland Tourism Australia and New Zealand, who is going to share with us eight of his favourite villages from the Magical Places list. You may remember Livio from episode 45 when he chatted about the Grand Tour of Switzerland, or from episode 42 where he shared some of the wonderful Swiss customs and traditions with us, as well as Switzerland's UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Livio is going to take us on a virtual visit to villages that are characterised by castles, abbeys, beautiful village squares and attractive guild houses and all have a fascinating history too. Are you ready to plan your own tour of Switzerland's magical places? You need Switzerland. As always, I'd like to thank Livio and his colleagues from Switzerland Tourism for sponsoring the podcast. You can find out more about the 50 magical places and lots more Swiss travel information and inspiration on myswitzerland.com. Good morning, Livio. Thank you for coming back onto the podcast. Good morning, Caroline. Always good to see you. Thank you. Now, so for those listeners who haven't listened to one of your previous episodes, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit, a little bit about um, your background? Yeah, sure. So, sure. So, my name is Livio, and uh, I'm here the director at Switzerland Tourism in Sydney. We, uh, with a small team, we look after Australia and New Zealand. So, we uh, we're promoting our beautiful country to um, Australians and New Zealanders and, and make sure they uh, visit Switzerland. <laughs> Wonderful. Now, we can tell that you have a little accent, although it is it's excellent. You're not at all difficult to understand, but which <laughs> part of Switzerland are you originally from? So I'm, I'm uh, from a small place called Mayenfeld in the uh, east of Switzerland in Graubünden. Um, maybe people know it from the famous Heidi story. So the story Heidi was uh, written, or um, let's say that, that the author, she was inspired uh, by the, the, the crisp mountain air and the, uh, the alpine landscape, etc. cetera, in, uh, in Meinfeld. Uh, so I'm, I, I am from originally from a touristic region, and maybe that's, why the, you know, that's the reason why I ended up in the tourism industry. <laughs> okay, so today we're going to talk about um, a new list that's been uh, released of, of some of the most mm-hmm. magical places in Switzerland. Um, can you tell us about um, how, how did that list actually come about or, or who's, who's responsible for, for choosing these magical places? <laughs> That's right. It's not a new list and it's not something we invented at Switzerland Tourism, uh, I must say. It's basically, uh, you know, magical places. It's hidden gems, selected villages that represent the cultural and the architectural diversity of our country and they, they're all included in the federal inventory of Swiss heritage sites. So that's the ISOS. And, uh, you know, that's, that's basically something that has been done uh, for a few years. And now Switzerland Tourism uh, selected 50 of those hidden gems and, uh, you know, started promoting them to, um, to our customers. 
And uh, what's very interesting, and you might notice, uh, Caroline, all these places can also be found along the Grand Tour of Switzerland, which is um, obviously a great, uh, great opportunity for us as well to promote yeah. those magical places. Yeah. Okay. So, yes, uh, previously when you are on the podcast, we chatted about the Grand Tour and, and some of the wonderful places that you can uh, can visit while you're driving driving yourself around Switzerland. So um, the, you're going to share with us today some extra special places that we can include on our own Grand Tour itinerary. That's right, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> now, out of that list of 50, you've, um, you've selected eight that you'd like to tell us about today. So yeah. um, let's get started. Sounds good. I'm ready. <laughs> okay. So the first one you mentioned is uh, quite close to the very popular city of Lucerne, uh, and it's called Stans. Yes, that's right. So Stans, that's um, that's uh, pronounced correctly. Stans is <laughs> is uh, in the uh, so- so-called Lake Lucerne region, as you say. So it's not far from the city of Lucerne, and it's the uh, capital city of the canton of Nidwalden. As you know, we have about twenty six cantons, so like states in Switzerland, and uh, that's the uh, local capital. And uh, it's not far from the southern end of Lake Lucerne. So, so Lucerne would be the you know the largest next uh, city to it. And uh, what's what's really nice actually about Stans, what I what I like um, is that it's surrounded by all the you know big big mountains. So it's surrounded by the Stanzerhorn mountain, the Boxerhorn, and the Burgenstock, which is famous for the Burgenstock Resort. So it's uh, it's got a great location uh, by the lake, surrounded by the mountains, and uh, especially on, on on the foot of the Stanzerhorn, which is probably one of the top excursions out of Stans. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now I also uh, believe that there there's a monastery there. Is that right? Yes, that's right. So it's a, it's in a monastery, which is uh, probably one of the reasons why this has been picked for those uh, for this list of magical places. Uh, there's a monastery. There's an expensive main square as well in the center of town, and it's all framed by uh, by those townhouses, um, a church with a dominant tower which stands in the center. So the, it's definitely one of the Switzerland's most beautiful squares, and I think that's why the reason why this has been picked mm. uh, into that into that special list, and that's also the reason why we would like to promote it to our customers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's a good point, um, know, knowing that there's things to see in, in the town itself. I guess a lot of people would visit Lucerne and they might do the excursion to Stanzerhorn, but they just go yeah. straight there. They, they don't actually stop and have a look around in the town itself. So. Um, yeah, That's we right. definitely That's encourage right. them to do that. We we def- especially encourage them to uh, pay a visit after the Stanzer Horn because they, uh, as you probably know, they have the so-called cabrio barn. So it's like a cable car without the roof. So you get on, up uh, up on a mountain with a very special cable car with, without roof, and you see the whole the whole panorama, the whole central Switzerland area from high up, which is mm. just uh, yeah, it's just uh, phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Okay, so another uh, town on the magical places list is also quite close to Lucerne and it's called yeah. Beromunster. What can you tell That's us right. about that? So, so Beromunster, I chose, it's, it's again, it's the same region. It's in, in Lake Lucerne region. And what's, what's really nice there, it's, uh, it, it's location again. So it's, it's on a gentle hill. So it's not like flat. It is, it is not on a mountain, but it's also not quite flat. So it lies on a gentle hill between a number of lakes. There's the Lake Baldecker, the Lake Sempach and the Lake Halville which sort of uh, are around uh, the village. But what's, what it's really known for is its beautiful Baroque-style Abbey district, which you can, you know, which you can find in the centre uh, of the village, but also um, its former radio station, the Radio Baromünster. So every, every time you talk to a Swiss person and you mention the Radio Baromünster, that's something they, uh, they know about. <laughs> okay, so that's yeah. one of its landmarks. And when I was Absolutely. doing a bit of reading about Baromünster, um, one of the things that I discovered was that it's, home to one of the oldest printing presses in Switzerland. Yes, that's right. I think there's now a museum um, sort of highlighting some of the, the history of, of printing in the town. Yes, exactly. That's definitely one of the, one of the highlights as well. So the, the, the letterpress goes back, I think, to the 14th century, if I'm not mistaken. So it's a really, you know, it's a lot of history next to the, next to the architecture, the, the Abbey district, the, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of history which, which, which we can use uh, as storytelling. You know, which mm. people can go there and, and experience themselves, which is uh, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. okay. And also, yeah, as we as we mentioned, quite close to Lucerne. So, would it be possible to visit both those places in the one day if you were driving from from Lucerne? I would say you could definitely you can definitely do it in one day. Um, a visit, you know, from Lucerne and to Berminster. But to be honest, I would probably spend at least two days 
because there's so much to see um, in the town itself. You know, they have the city is basically split in two parts. You have the more spirit, spiritual part in the west of Berminster and the more, let's say, secular part in the east. Uh, and then, like you said, there's the, uh, the, the, the letterpress museum. There's the, from the radio Berminster, there's the, the old radio tower, which is still there. So the broadcasting tower, which is more than 200 meters high. And uh, that kind of dominates the, the landscape as well. And it's, um, it's an important witness in technical achievement. So uh, there's lots of, you know, art, which is showcased around there. So it's, it's really a lot to see. So I'll definitely probably spend two days. But um, again, it's not that far from, uh, from the city of Lucerne. So a great opportunity for a, for a day excursion, for example. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I think the, the good thing too is that these places are obviously they're, they're beautiful and that's why they're part of this list, but they're a bit off the tourist, the normal tourist uh, radar. So you're probably going yeah, to go yeah. there and not find hordes and hordes of people. That's that's right. I think that's that's one of the reasons why we we decided to promote this um, this fifty magical places uh, because the, uh, away from mass tourism, you know. It's, let's be honest, you know, especially in in Australia, you have lots of of tourists visiting Switzerland and going to the obvious places, the Jungfrau, York, Zurich, Lucerne, Interlaken, etc., which is nice and which is which is great. That that's you know that's how it should be. But uh, often people, especially when they go the second or the third time, they might wonder what else is there in Switzerland. You know, where can I go? Uh, what what did I have you know what, what have I not seen yet and that's yeah, that's exactly um, those places we yeah. try to promote yeah. and also too I think after um, being so starved of travel for the last couple of years uh, we're probably mm. going to expect a lot of tourists at the popular places um, everywhere this summer so it, it's absolutely nice to have a bit of a an alternative that you can yeah get just get away from the crowds for a day or two absolutely that's right yes yeah. <laughs> Let's move on to uh, Bremgarten, which is fairly close to Zurich, I believe. Yes, that's right. So it's uh, it's in the north of Switzerland. So it's um, in the canton of Argau, you know, talking about the states and the cantons we have. But it's in the canton of Argau, but it's uh, not far from Zurich. That's right. So it's, um, it's very close to uh, the biggest city of, of Switzerland. Small, small medieval towns. It's worth visiting if you have never been there. <laughs> Sounds great. So, what are the, some of the highlights there? Uh, I think the uh, the unique character of the town is um, the situation again. So, it's situated on a peninsula. So, if you look up Bremgarten on on Google Maps, you see the the River Royce is sort of going around the village. Uh, the River Royce is one of the largest rivers we have in Switzerland. So, it goes from Lake Lucerne uh, all the way north uh, to Brook, where it meets the uh, other river called Are. And uh, and it's just amazing how it's how it's built. So it's basically divided in an upper and a lower town, and it's it's just amazing for people to stroll around. You know the pretty alleyways, the historic buildings, and everything. So it's it's a small village, but there's a lot to see. And I think the main um, attraction again is the you know the unique architecture and the history that you can see when you walk through uh, the town of Bremgarten. Mm. Yeah. One of the uh, photos I saw when I was reading up on it was uh, of a covered wooden footbridge. Very similar yes, to, yeah. to the famous one in, in Lucerne. So, That's again, right. there's right. an option to go and see a beautiful covered wooden bridge uh, with fewer people. Exactly. And, and from there, that, that dates back to the 16th uh, century, actually. So it's a very old uh, wooden bridge and uh, it, still, it still works. So it's, you can, you know, people can still use it to commute uh, in town, out of town. And it just offers a beautiful view of the town as well from there. So it's, it's, uh, it's all connected with each other. So you can walk up uh, across the bridge. You go to the upper town with all the, the castle and the, the different alleyways, and then you head down to the other part of town uh, to explore that side as well. Mm, yeah, yeah. So- sounds wonderful. That's definitely one I'm, I'm putting on my list to visit. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> yeah. Now, in the, the next town you're going to talk about, I have actually been to, and I'm looking forward to returning again very soon, uh, and that is Appenzell. And Appenzell, we've had yeah. a, we've mentioned it a few times on previous episodes of the podcast. Um, it's Probably a bit lesser known that part of Switzerland to many international tourists, but I know it's very popular with the Swiss. Um, what That's are some right. of the right. yeah? What are some of the unique features of Appenzell that that we should know about? There, there's a lot, and, and like you just said, I think we could even have a podcast just about Appenzell because there's so much to see and so much much history. But yet, there's it's not that busy. It's not that uh, touristy as uh, as other parts of Switzerland. And uh, Appenzell is, is probably known for its rural customs and traditions. You know, they have these, uh, for example, this ceremonial descent of the cattle in autumn, you know, where they uh, celebrate the, the return of the cattle. And it's, it's, it's all, they're all it's, they're, the whole festival around it. It's music, it's, it's a party, it's, it's, it's full on. 
And uh, there's lots of cultural events, such as folk music festivals, rustic dances, and, uh, and of course, lots of hiking tours in the uh, Alpstein region. So there's, it's a lot to see. And it's, uh, you know, again, looking at Google Maps, it's, it's one of the larger towns in the area. They have about, uh, I think, about 7,000 inhabitants. And it's sort of the uh, political and econ- economical center of the Ap- so Appenzell in the Roden Canton, which is the smallest canton, actually, um, of Switzerland. The smallest canton, but there's a lot to see. So it's, it's quite exciting. And of course, there's the whole, you know, with the car-free village, the, the pretty small streets and alleys, boutiques. So it's really ideal for shopping and browsing as well in mm. Appenzell. Yeah. yeah. And and the yeah. the as you mentioned, the the pretty streets, you know, the buildings all beautifully painted and then decorated. The shops have those lovely wrought iron signs that you can't right. yeah, you can't help not wanting to go in and, and buy something because they're, they're yeah, yeah, exactly. taken with, with the outside of the shop. You know it's gonna be pretty special when you get inside it's, too. Exactly. It's yeah. it's really taken care of as well. You know, you, you walk through and you see these boutiques, these shops, and at the same time, wherever you look, you see those facades which are decorated with frescoes and lovely paintings. So it's really uh yeah, wherever you walk, it's it's a lot to see in, yeah. in up until that's mm. right. And of course we should mention what happened. One of the th- other things Appenzell is very famous for too, the, the cheese. The cheese, of course. We haven't mentioned the cheese, which is, by the way, one of my favorite, fa- uh, most favorite cheeses. So Appenzell cheese is probably something I eat several times a week. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I can't, you know, can't get rid of it. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> it's yeah. definitely famous for that as well. That's yeah. right. Yeah. I think it was great, like strolling around the, the streets in Appenzell and then you'd go around a corner and there was like a little uh, vacant field with, with a few cows in it and the bells, oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> Swinging and, the yeah. swinging and swinging, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it was wonderful. It's nice. Yeah, a lot of people they go there to uh, to um, for, for hikes and walks as well. That's the uh, it's like a hub, you know, from there you can do lots of excursions uh, outside the, 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 the town center as well. You know, there's famous walks uh, around the Sentis, the Hoher Kasten, and in general up uh, in the uh, Alpstein region where you can uh, go do really nice walks and hikes. Yeah, and it's yeah. very close to St. Gallen, too, one of one of the largest right, cities yeah. in Switzerland. So yeah, exactly. It's not very not far, far off off the main route. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You yeah. would think it is when you when you get there, but it's it's very accessible, yeah. very easy to get to. Yeah, excellent. Verdenberg is the next place that you had on your list to, to chat about. Yes, Verdenberg. Yes. So Verdenberg is uh, again we we're still in the east of Switzerland. So so Verdenberg is located between St. Gallen and Chur. Um, on the map, so it's it's also very close to um, the the Principality of Liechtenstein, the very small country, uh, which is bordering to Switzerland, and it's located in the Rhine Valley. So it's it's just along the Rhine as well. And I think what's what Württemberg is really famous for it's it's the castle. So the castle, which is also called called Württemberg, uh, sits majestically above the village. So it's not like you know in in the village surrounded by by houses etc. So mm-hmm. it's sort of above the village. So you can see from everywhere. And what's really nice, um, if you if you look it up on Google Maps, uh, sorry, on on Google Images, you can see the uh, vineyards around it. So it's 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 just picturesque when you see the castle, the vineyards around it, and uh, uh, underneath you can see the uh, the actual village. And there's also a small lake, which is called Lake Württemberg. So everything is called Württemberg. <laughs> they, they made sure that everyone knew about Württemberg, whether it was the, exactly. the town, the castle, or the lake. Yeah, and I was reading that it's uh, the oldest timber framed settlement in switzerland that's right that's right let's be honest you know you walk you walk through all these little towns and at the end of the day it all looks the same but in in Württemberg, you can really see the uh the the age so you know these ancient houses to the buildings people have lived there for hundreds of years and then that i think that's what it makes really really special and and of course it's the uh the, the, again the small medieval town with these picturesque market square, a square in the middle but then they all have arcades around it and it's a very small town, so compared to Appenzell, it's a tiny, a tiny little town, uh, Wurtemberg. So again, you know, you wouldn't, you know, spend like a, a couple of days there, just just really a short visit and walk around and spend some time by the lake or at the castle. But uh, it's definitely worth it, and uh, it's just the panorama around it as well, which mm-hmm. is which is fantastic. You have the uh, the cool Firsten panorama, so it's mm-hmm. this is like a mountain range, which is very high, and it's just near near uh, next to Wurtemberg, so you can see this mountain range. From Württemberg, which 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 adds to the uh, you know its unique character mm. as a, as a magic town. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. What great foresight for them to build the castle up on the hill so that even today exactly. we, we get the great views. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, staying right. in uh, in the east of Switzerland, still um, mm-hmm. moving on to Graubünden. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. 
the village of of Sent. Now it looks um it's very very east, isn't it? It's it's very close it's, to the Italian border. That's right. That's right. So it's it's very east. It's uh it's a we, we talk about a completely different area now compared to the others we we talked before mm-hmm. because now we're really high up, right? So Sent is on uh, on 1500 meters above sea level. So it's it's uh it's cold. It's it's more mountainous and a bit more rural now. And it's it's located in the Unterengadin, which is a sunny valley um, high up in Grabunden, like you said. And uh, what's I think what's very special in Sint, it's in the Romance speaking part. So as you know, we have four languages in Switzerland and Romance is one of them. Uh, only 0.5% of the population speak this language. So it's a very, um, you know, something very special uh, in the area. And w- what's really nice in uh, in Sint as a village is, the again, the architecture and the the, uh, the vibe and the atmosphere in the village because back in the 17th century lots of people emigrated to Italy and they became cray they became craftsmen mercenaries confectioners etc and when they came back uh, they they built all these impressive houses with the classical form and those striking tent roofs so you have a quite kind of an Italian charm mm-hmm. as well when yeah. uh, when walking around the village which is beautiful yeah okay and uh, I guess in in winter there's obviously uh, skiing is is very very accessible it's, Close, close to exactly. ski resorts and, and hiking in summer. That's right. That's right. It is all about outdoor activities in Sen. At the end of the day, people go there to explore the village, of course, and you know, mm-hmm. have, a, have a wander around and a stroll. And um, but then at the end of the day, there's so much, so many activities you can do. There's the um, there's a natural ice field they have um, every year. There's rock climbing, skiing. There's a, a museums. There's there's so much to do in the village, mm. which is which is amazing. And of course, it's everything. It's it's and you're always surrounded by those typical Engadine farmhouses. The village, with its uh, with its great um, you know architecture, which is which is just a nice uh, a nice atmosphere when you're yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, sounds beautiful. All right, so let's move back uh, more into the center of Switzerland now um, mm-hmm. to Bergdorf, the next. The next little Bergdorf, magical yeah. place on on your list. <laughs> That's right, Bergdorf again, completely on the other side. So <laughs> we're moving back and forth on the Swiss map. So um, listeners might be confused, but <laughs> if you Google or if you just look up Burgdorf, um, it's located in the canton of Bern, uh, which is only thirty minutes outside Bern, the city, the city of Bern, which is our capital city, and it's it's also the gateway to the famous Emmental Valley, which is obviously famous for uh, the you know the famous cheese and the typical Bernese houses. And uh, you know the reason I chose uh, Borgdorf for um, for this list again is the, um, the the famous castle they have. It's it's located on a hill again, so you can see it from far far away. And of course, the uh, architectural historic focus um, which the village has with the castle district, the town church, and the old market. So it's it's uh, next to its uh, brilliant location between Bern and the Emmental, It just has a lot to offer in um, as as a city itself for for visitors. Hmm. Okay. Wonderful. And the last one that you that you chose um, is not all that far from Bern. I think it actually um, almost borders the the canton of of Bern. Um, uh, Rougemont is that correct Rougemont, pronunciation? Exactly. That's uh, I wouldn't know because I'm not French speaking, but <laughs> I think it sounds pretty well. It sounds pretty well. And um, like I said, you said it's in the French speaking part, so we uh, we're moving slightly. Uh, west in the, in the French speaking part, and uh, Rougemont is located in the Lake Geneva region, so in the canton of uh, Vaud. Vaud is the canton, and uh, it's it's located in the in the heart of the Vaud Alps. So it's not it's not um, a metropolitan or a city area. It's 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 very rural. It's in the mountains. It's located between the canton of Fribourg and the canton of Bern. So it's sort of squashed in between. <laughs> and um, I think Rougemont is best known for its castle and its traditional farmhouses. So this is proper countryside now. Uh, if, if you look it up, it's it's beautiful. It's it's uh, it's easy to get to. I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> but it's very rural and very beautiful. And um, you know, because it's so rural, the the settlement began only in the second half of the 11th century when they built the uh, Cluniac Monastery, which was then you know uh, later developed the village. So um, that's that's kind of how it how it all started. And the uh, the old village has a very linear structure. So you have the traditional farmhouses from the 17th century. Uh, which stand on foundations which are constructed with masonry. So you can see that uh, mm-hmm. clearly when you when you uh, walk around the village. And then again, you have these facades which are decorated with carvings, and it's just it's just just remarkable little village when uh, when walking around. And uh, you might want to know um, this might be your next question, but I'll just uh, crack on talking because it's it's really Please spectacular. Do. Because this, you know when tourism started in uh, in the 19th century, that's when the, the famous Montreux Oberland 
Bernoise Railway uh, was opened. And that's actually one of the oldest electric railways in the country. And it's just fabulous um, and so easy now to, uh, to get to Rougemont. And it's mm. also the starting point, obviously, of the famous panoramic Golden Pass Railway, which many people use to uh, get from Montreux uh, to Zweisimmen and then to Gstaad. So there's a uh, lot to see again in this, yeah. uh, in this town. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we've, we've touched on, on eight of the magical places there, but as, as we mentioned earlier, there's 50 in total. And they right. cover the, the whole country, don't they? So even though we've just That's sort right. of selected, um, you know, a, a few different villages, there's something mm-hmm. all over the country that people can all can over include. the place. Yeah. That's yeah. right. And I did mention this actually, what, what, we, what I did mention at the beginning, there's actually 1,200 places in this list uh, from, from uh, the Federal Inventory of Swiss Heritage Sites. We just chose the 50, uh, you know, we thought would be beautiful to promote. And like we said, there along the Grand Tour. Uh, of Switzerland, such so as a great opportunity to explore yeah. them when uh, traveling around. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, I, I did notice on the My Switzerland website um, in the section on on the magical places, which I'll link to in the show notes, there is a fantastic uh, map which shows the Grand Tour route and and where all these fifty places on the mag- on the magical places list are. So, I'll link to mm-hmm. that so that if if someone is interested in one of the eight villages that we've chatted about today or, or some of the other villages, they can quickly have a look and, and work out how they're going to fit that into their itinerary or, or redo their itinerary so that they can visit a few of these places as they travel around. Exactly. That's great. As always, the My Switzerland website has got <laughs> heaps of information about, uh, about the magical places and, and, of course, the Grand Tour. Um, where else can we find info about uh, all the things to do in Switzerland? Well, probably on your uh, podcast, Caroline. Oh, well, of course. <laughs> You've done a very good job on your <laughs> I, I was uh, going to your... let you promote your, your social media pages there. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That there's, there's, a, there's a lot, let's be honest. You know, at the end of the day, I, I always recommend the, the website myswitzerland.com. Uh, but of course, you know, there's lots of information on, on our Facebook, on our Instagram, uh, YouTube, et cetera, et cetera. So we're everywhere uh, out there. And uh, yeah, if, if you Google my Switzerland, if you Google 50 uh, magical places in Switzerland, you are, you're going to be disappointed, pretty sure. <laughs> Fantastic. And I will include a few photos from, from the places that we've, we've chatted about today too, mm-hmm. just to, to whet everyone's appetite and, and uh, <laughs> yeah, just give them that little extra nudge to, yes, definitely include some of these places uh, when you visit Switzerland. Exactly. Yeah. Sounds Thank wonderful. you very much again for your time, Livia. It's great chatting to you again. That's right. Thank you so much, Caroline. Has hearing about these eight magical places encouraged you to venture a little off the beaten path when you visit Switzerland? The great thing is that they are all easily accessible, however you choose to travel. So you can combine visits to these villages with visits to the most popular destinations in Switzerland too. As Livio mentioned, there are 50 villages on Switzerland tourism's list of magical places. We heard about Sayon in the canton of Valais in episode 16 and Trogen in the canton of appenzell Ausserrhoden in episode 18. Also on the list are Morkut in Ticino, St. Saffron, a gorgeous village in the Laveau wine region in canton Vaud, and Diesenhofen on the River Rhine in canton Turgau. There are certainly plenty of wonderful villages to explore. So why not include a couple in your Swiss itinerary? You won't be disappointed. I'll include a link to the full list of Magical Places villages and the map that I mentioned in the show notes for this episode. You can find the show notes at holidaystoswitzerland.com forward slash episode 52. I'd love to hear if you visit any of the 50 Magical Places when you visiting Switzerland. So do let me know. Either drop me an email to hello at holidaystoswitzerland.com or tag Holidays to Switzerland, that's Holidays number two Switzerland, on Instagram and let me know which village or villages you visited. Thanks for joining me today. Until next time, tschüss. If you'd like more great resources to help you plan your dream trip to Switzerland, there are lots of ways to connect with us. Visit our website holidaystoswitzerland.com Sign up for our monthly newsletter or join our friendly, helpful community of past and future travellers in our Switzerland travel planning group. You'll also find the links to connect with us in the show notes for this episode. Show notes and a list of all previous episodes are available at holidays to Switzerland.
swisscom slash podcast. Don't miss out on your fortnightly dose of Swiss travel inspo. Hit the subscribe button on your favorite podcast app so you never miss an episode. And if you enjoyed the show, please leave a rating. That's all for this edition of the Holidays to Switzerland Travel Podcast. Thanks for joining us and happy travel planning.